Hey beauties, good afternoon to you. Well, it's just four minutes to 12. So morning into the afternoon, beautiful people. So I am follow, I follow this fellow on um, TikTok and he was, he had a video and I, I became very concerned. You know, um, some alleged death threat to Auntie Donna. And I said, what? So I said, let me listen. And like he was saying that, you know, it's alleged that the authorities overseas would want her for some fraud or whatnot or money laundering. And he went on and on and was saying some things. So I said, let me listen. I don't get the death threat aspect of it. And he mentions two other women's, you know, sorry, names um, that I, I don't know if they're plotting her life, you know, allegedly. And, uh, and when they check the reasoning behind it, it it boils down to malicious envy, malignant jealousy. So because Auntie Donna, you know, she's a she's a philanthropist. Um, she gives back to children. She gives back to people. She helps people. So she's like a philanthropist. And the others, and, and I know she does. I've heard people talking about her cake that she makes, maybe her Christmas cakes and so on. And the other two, their business isn't booming. So they try to probably create, allegedly, based on what he's saying now in a guy's, a vitriol around her and their hate is developing because she's not they're not progressing prospering but auntie donna is you know he even went on to say that they wish you could they could wake up and hear that auntie donna is no longer on the earth it would make them feel good because then and there their business would now thrive doesn't work like that even if god forbid she should pass it doesn't mean that the people will come and now support you because there are other people who they can go to and support when they want their different cakes, be it Christmas cakes or whatever type of cakes. If what he has heard is true, I, no weapon formed against her shall ever prosper. I like Auntie Dan. I don't know her personally. She definitely does not know me. But I like people who try to. I admire the quality or the, the attribute of somebody who tries to help people who are downtrodden who are in need of help you may not you may be downtrodden for the moment you may not be impoverished you may not be indigent you may not be dirt poor you know like some of the somalian children's or children sorry or people who you know they they are they're really out financially you could just hit rock bottom for some reason you know you have people who are wealthy and then something just happened and you're just in a strained constrained posi position for a moment and somebody helps you. I am for people who try to help people to become better. And when somebody can help you financially, it speaks volume. Because I don't really see other philanthropists. I'm not saying that people don't help. You know, the Bible says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand does and vice versa. I'm not really one for public, but I can understand why people in this case have to do it. We live in a world where people like to create vitriol around something. So in other words, they get money. Let us say they get grants and aids. Let's say Auntie Donna was to get grants and aids from the government to give back to people. If she doesn't show proof of it to the world, yeah, she thief, she this. That's how some people are. That's how they will respond and you as a well-thinking person might start to wonder because you're human. Lord, I wonder if she really did. And that's not good. That is why I detest rumor. I detest propaganda in that, that is negative and will create a vitriol around somebody and tarnish their reputation. It will tarnish their reputation, create a damage to it, put a dent on their reputation. That's how people are. So unfortunately, people have to actually show. They may not necessarily want to do it, but if they don't do it, oh my God, the negatives that will follow them because people feel like they must know. People feel like they have to know. You know, and don't get me wrong, protocols must be followed. You know, especially when it involves other people's money. Don't get me wrong, pro protocols should be followed. But I'm just saying to you that sometimes they have to do these things publicly because people, you know, may not even know or people will accuse them falsely and so forth. So they're forced to do it. But you know what bothers me? Yet again, it's a case where allegedly it's women against women without a cause. And when I say without a cause, you know, I literally had to, I had to buy a book to understand why women hate other. You know, you know, but you know, sometimes you just want to see backup evidence on same. You just want to hear to see if you, you can prove your perspective to be true and to be factual.
And I had to look up the top reasons why women hate other women without a cause. You know, we know the, the ultimate root thing is jealousy and envy in malicious and malignant ways. One, the woman is beautiful. Two, she's smarter than they are. Three, she has a strong work ethic. I can tell all of that is so true. She doesn't fit into the group pecking order. So if she's not the type to gossip and slander and call other names and create problems. Yes, she's confident. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. The beautiful and the confidence. I'd, she's fashionable. Mm -hmm. She's thin. All right, me not thin. Yeah, back in the day I was. But I'm okay with my size. She has a strong personality. Not a controlling personality. She's strong. More extroverted. She's bold. She's courageous. She's not afraid to be who she is. You know what I mean? She's not afraid to stand alone. She's not afraid to take on tasks. She's not afraid to support people even if others are against them. You know, and other things. She's competitive, but not competitive in the way. Like I, when I hear that women compete against other women, I, I'm taken aback because I've never done that. Compete against, unless I'm in a competition. Like if you know you want to win, say you're entering The Voice or something like that, then you will have no choice to compete against men, men and women, you know. But to say that, okay, oh, I'm watching this woman. Oh, she comes this way. Watch me. I'm going to come and do what? And another reason, if the woman is wealthy. Girl, me not wealthy yet. Let's say yet, you know. I'm going to call things that are not as though they are. So I will be wealthy financially one day. And or and if men gravitate towards her. When I say men, I don't mean the woman is a promiscuous woman. You know, some men just like the vibe and like the... There's just the... Just hanging around that woman. You know, they like that. Maybe they like her more than that. But if they ever... If other women ever see that, Lord have his mercy. Lord have his mercy, Percy. But I can tell you, women, especially beautiful women, if we I, we can speak from experiences, if you look beautiful, if you dress well, if you're smart, if you're brilliant, and they see that potential and you're, they're not somebody who they can control, let me tell you something. It's going to be a hell of a ride living on this planet with people. Sometimes you say to yourself as a woman, but the more I pull back, pull away from them, it's the more they come out like you wonder what the heck is happening you know, the Bible says the godly shall suffer persecution. It's a part of, you know, it's just a part of life. Murphy's law will come to us. But I cannot, you know, it's it's still, it still behooves me maybe to find the etymology behind this jealousy and envy from one woman to another. I mean, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen with males. But it maybe they're not wired that way. Their psyche is not way, that way. So if the man looks better than them, they do. I don't know if they are going to go and do all kinds of things. Maybe I don't. I just cannot fathom it. I cannot. Because the only Jezebel that I remember when I read in the Bible, it was Jezebel wanting to get rid of Elijah because he killed many of her false prophets. And she was so angry. And that is why she said, by tomorrow, should I kill this man? You know? So I, I'm trying to find, you know, in the Bible, it was which woman against what it was. A, it usually was a brother against brother. Remember um, Jacob, what he did with Esau and Esau was so infuriated because he tricked him and he had to move and live with his uncle Laban and trick her, reach him back until Esau's anger subsided, which it did eventually. <clears throat> so I am trying to, I would love to find the history of this thing with women just deciding that they're going to pick on other women who have never done them wrong. The, I, Lord, Lord, I pray you cover Auntie Donna. And if, you know, I hope these some of these allegations are not true, especially who one that, you know, fraudulent or, or money laundering and all of that. I pray it is not true, you know, because I like her philanthropy um, her phil and um, her helping other people. I really hope not. I know that many people that think that, you know, a lot of people are involved in all kinds of things when you see them give back financially. Not necessarily. There are people who actually work hard for their money and then they become wealthy over, at, over a period of time and they give back because they know where they have been. Not everybody has done things in heinous ways or diabolical ways or unseeming ways. No. So I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt if I'm wrong. At least I err on the side of being, trying to give her doing the right thing. As opposed to having to think negatively of her. I'm not going to think that she's in any fraudulent thing or money laundering. I'm going to think that she has worked hard, gotten sponsors to help. But may God cover her and may those women change their hearts, change their minds, change, change their souls. If what has been posited is true. It is a sad 
state of affair. Guys, follow me on TikTok. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please share this message.